At 9 a.m. one morning in 1983, this three-month-old Egyptian baby was rushed to the hospital. He had severe diarrhea and was extremely dehydrated. Sadly, he was just about to pass away. But at 9.15 a.m., the nurses started feeding him some weird, magical water. By 10 a.m., somehow the baby had become more energetic and started sipping eagerly from the spoon. And by 12 p.m., a miracle happened. The baby had gotten his strength back and was now fully recovered. So what was in this magical water, this miracle medicine that they fed him? Water, salt, sugar, that's it. This simple combination of ingredients has saved 60 million lives worldwide and is considered to be one of the greatest medical inventions of the 20th century. The thing is, you have all had it at least once in your life, but you may recognize it by its other name, ORS. But you know what's really sad? Most people in the world don't even know the name of the Indian doctor who pioneered this incredible invention and chose not to make any money from it so that he could save millions of lives. This is the incredible story of Dilip Mohalanobish. My name is Tirthak Saha and you are watching Under the Radar. A big shout out to the Zero One Network for making this series possible. In 1971, East Pakistan, which is now known as Bangladesh, erupted into a brutal war for independence. A struggle for democracy. A struggle to hold general elections. The violence was horrifying and millions of refugees fled across the border into India. A total of 10 million refugees sought sanctuary in India. And by June of that year, while the war was still going on, the deadly monsoon rains arrived and it started washing over 10 million humans living in the crowded refugee camps along the India-Bangladesh border. These camps had no proper sanitation, no clean water, and barely any medical facilities. It was quite literally the perfect breeding ground for disease. And that is exactly what happened. Cholera attacked the camps like a curse from the gods. Now, let me explain why cholera is so terrifying. The bacteria doesn't kill you by attacking your organs like other diseases. No, no, no. It's much more simple and brutal. It forces your body to push out all of its fluids through violent diarrhea and vomiting. You can start losing up to 20 liters of fluid every single day. Your dehydrated blood literally becomes too thick to pump. You can go from being perfectly healthy to dead within 24 hours. And this is the terrible situation where Dr. Mahalanovish enters the story. He was only 36 years old and he had gone to volunteer his services at a refugee camp. When Dr. Mahalanovish walked into that camp, this is what he saw. Two small houses acting as temporary hospitals, 16 beds in total, and 350,000 sick refugees standing outside waiting to get treated. Even if the small team of volunteer doctors worked 24 hours a day, it was mathematically impossible to treat everyone. And as if that wasn't bad enough, there was a bigger problem. You see, at the time, cholera was only treated using intravenous fluids or IVs. But IV equipment is not exactly cheap and it's not easy to maintain and operate them in the middle of a damn battlefield. And on top of that, only specially trained and qualified medical personnel were allowed to inject IVs into patients. And in that camp, there were only two people who were trained to do that. One of the doctors later described the scene. To treat these people with IV saline, you literally had to kneel down in their feces and in their vomit. The floors were covered with severely ill patients. There was no room to even walk. I mean, the situation was so terrible and so hopeless that you couldn't really blame the doctors if they gave up. Back then, doctors believed that when someone has severe diarrhea, their intestines are not able to absorb nutrition. And that is why IVs were essential. See, you basically had to bypass the digestive system and inject the nutrients in the form of sodium directly into the bloodstream. But Dr. Mohalanovish said, mm -mm, I don't think that's true. Pointing to some research done in the 1960s, Dr. Mohalanovish claimed that no, even in severe diarrhea, the intestines could still absorb sodium 
if, and this is the important part, only if glucose was also present in the mix. The glucose, or in simple words sugar, helped pull the sodium, or in simple words salt, into the bloodstream. Now, this wasn't his invention. Scientists like David Nalen and Richard Cash had already proven that it worked in 1968, but they had only used it in addition to IV therapy, kind of like a top-up, like an insurance. What Dr. Mohalo Novish was about to do had never been done before. He was going to use oral rehydration as the primary treatment, as the only treatment in filthy conditions in the middle of a literal battlefield. Years later, he said, I had no choice but to go ahead and use ORS to the maximum. But I was confident that it would work. Now, just take a second to think about the weight of that decision. If he is wrong, hundreds of people will die deaths that could have been prevented if he had just stuck to conventional treatment. I mean, his career would definitely be over, but he also might face criminal charges. But what if he is right? Thousands more will be saved. Dr. Mohalo Novish prepared a simple solution. 22 grams of glucose, 3.5 grams of sodium chloride, 2.5 grams of sodium bicarbonate per liter of water. Then his team mixed it in large drums. And then over the next eight weeks, they treated 3,700 cholera patients using just ORS. And then came the real benefit. Instead of using up the precious time of doctors and nurses, now they could just teach family members how to give it to the patients. I mean, they had to. There literally wasn't enough medical staff to treat everyone. And this is something they couldn't have done with the IV treatment. They called it oral saline and printed pamphlets in Bengali explaining how to mix and use it. They even got a Bangladeshi radio station to broadcast the instructions to thousands of people. And then there was nothing to do except for wait and pray that their gamble had worked. The results were beyond anyone's wildest dreams. The death rate dropped from 30% to 3.6% to just 1%. Let me put that into some perspective. They had managed to reduce deaths by 90% using a treatment that cost almost nothing, required no specialized medical equipment, and could be handled by anyone who knows how to hold a cup. When the head of the World Health Organization's Bacterial Diseases Unit visited the refugee camps, he couldn't believe what he was seeing. People who should have been dead were walking around. Kids who would have become statistics were playing football in the mud. Now you would think that after such a dramatic success, ORS would have been embraced by the international medical community overnight. But you would be wrong. When Dr. Mohalanovich tried to publish his finding, Journal after journal rejected his paper. They just wouldn't agree that a simple packet of salt and sugar could be a major treatment. And it would be seven more years before ORS became mainstream and widely accepted. Seven long years in which millions of lives could have been saved. But here's what really blows my mind. When ORS did become famous and mainstream, the doctor could have easily filed a patent on it, started a pharmaceutical company and made millions from it. But he never filed a single patent. And when asked why, he simply said, I believe that this knowledge should belong to all of humanity. Dr. Dilip Mohalanovish continued his work quietly. From 1975 to 79, he worked with the WHO, setting up cholera control programs in Yemen, Egypt, and Afghanistan. He kept researching about ORS, kept improving the formula, and kept saving lives. Much later, he did get some international recognition. He won two major awards in 2002 and 2006. <laughs> When he finally passed away in October 2022, most of the world and his own country didn't notice. Today, ORS saves 1.5 million lives every single year. UNICEF distributes 500 million packets annually. There is no doubt that this simple packet is one of the most important medical inventions of the 20th century. And so I have to ask, if the doctor had been born in America or in Europe, or if he had worked at Harvard or Oxford or MIT instead of Kolkata, would he have remained as unknown as he is today? We celebrate entrepreneurs who make millions by gatekeeping and monetizing other people's hard work. And on the other hand, we ignore scientists who literally save millions of lives and refuse to take a single penny for it. So listen, do me a favor. The next time you see this packet, and you will, remember the name. 
Dr. Dilip Mohalanovich. Remember that monsoon of 1971 when a doctor forced into an impossible situation changed the world. Because not all heroes wear capes. Some just carry simple packets of salt and sugar.